All right, so just a follow-up video here with the jumper, EasyBook 2. Now, it's actually performing better than I thought it would. It definitely feels a little bit snappier, a little more fluid than most Atom X5Z8300 devices that I have tested out. I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's something to do with the fact that probably because it's only running a 1080p resolution and the fact that uh, it doesn't have a touch digitizer there. Maybe the hardware or the BIOS settings or even maybe the RAM timings are slightly better. So I just want to go over my findings now using it in a couple of days here. So I did run some benchmarks and I'll just very quickly go through those. So here's the Ice Storm 1.2 score. Ice Storm, that was extreme, sorry, Ice Storm 1.2. These scores are nothing wonderful. And 3D Mark 11. Now I ran this benchmark and looped it about three times just to push the system really, really hard to see just how hot it's going to get. Because some people mentioned in the comments, they said that this... This uh, laptop here apparently will get that hot that it would just shut itself down to stop it from damaging the the CPU. And this is the last score that I ran, which is Geekbench 3. That's maybe marginally higher than normal. So the temperatures of it, after doing that looping of the 3D Mark there, I managed to get it up to 85 degrees, but it wouldn't actually go past 85 degrees. You can see there, so 85 degrees is the max, and I was running it for 49 minutes. And within that time, I managed to loop... 3D Mark 11, three times there, and it just wouldn't exceed 85, which is, I guess, a good thing. I mean, that is still quite hot, so around this area here, just behind where the power button is, or the backspace, um, gets very hot to the touch, I would say, probably around about 46 degrees, um, even maybe even up to 50 surface temperatures that is on the plastic there. And it didn't have any thermal throttling, which is interesting, but it literally says that it is... T-junction max only 5 degrees away, so they have set it to 90 there. So performance-wise, just moving in and out and about in the system seems quite snappy and fluid, and more than other systems for some reason, which has definitely surprised me. So if I quickly go into, for example, Device Manager, now that can tend to be quite slow to load up, but look at that, it pops up quite quick. Now in other devices like the uh, Chewy High book that I was recently reviewing, if I did that, that would probably take maybe about five seconds to load up or six. So that pops up quite quick. But it seems to be everything like that. Like at the moment, I'm doing a little bit of multitasking here. I have Chrome open and each with all those tabs and just open up now the PC. And you see that pops up relatively quick. And yeah, it seems to be form performing quite well. Now the internal storage is an N-card. It's a B-Wind eMMC. Now, they are never the fastest, but even so, it doesn't seem to be holding up Windows 10 here. So these are the speeds I got out of it. This right here is my 128 gigabyte Samsung Pro Micro SD that I did actually get to work. I didn't have to format it. It ran at FAT32. And those are the speeds I got from it. Not too bad. Uh, they, I could probably actually get faster out of it if I set it to uh, performance. And that's when you have to use Device Manager to eject it safely without having any corruption of the card or anything. But there are the speeds now of the eMMC on there. So read speeds, they're okay. The writes are where the B-Win eMMCs always tend to suffer. So here the, the 4K random writes are particularly low. But saying that, it doesn't feel as slow. So, so far, the, using the trackpad on it, okay, it's usable, I will say that, but it's definitely not one of the best ones. Of course, for this price range, you can't expect that, because this was this cost me like 189 US, so it's very cheap. Now, the screen, I did make an error on the unboxing. I said the screen was IPS. Definitely isn't IPS, it's actually just LED. So it has good viewing angles from the left and right, but the vertical... If I move like that, you see instantly those colors become washed out. And you definitely have to look at the screen straight on. But it's actually quite a nice panel. So one of the definitely one of the positives on it. Now the hinge on it, someone asked me as well, they sent me a message, said, what's the hinge like? Is it all flimsy and horrible and plasticky feeling? Well, no, because the back of the lid, I think, definitely has alloy in it. There's definitely some metal in the hinge. And the hinge feels quite solid and good. And it doesn't really have that much flex to it. It's definitely not too bad, again, considering the price. You'll probably hear me saying that a lot. And the keyboard, yes, it does have a lot of 
bounce and flex to it. But I managed to type up a lot of comments and even worked on some of my reviews and things using this keyboard. And it definitely isn't the best experience because there's a lot of bounce on there. But if I could fix that problem somehow, maybe open it up and have a look and see if there's a way to make it more rigid, then definitely would be a little bit better to type on. Uh, what else can I talk about is the battery life. Okay, battery life. Just ignore that saying 10 hours, 45 minutes. It's gone a bit funny on me there. Battery life is very good. It's not like those other Chinese laptops that claim to have 6 hours battery life and only last for about 2. I can definitely confirm you're going to get at least 6 hours of web use, video use, probably even about 7, 7.5. So battery life, quite good. So overall, the device is plasticky. It does have a very cheap feel to it, cheap build, but... I am liking the performance of it and the screen is good. Just the keyboard bounce and the real deal breaker for me personally on this is the fact that you can't power external hard drives. There's something going on with the USB ports just aren't supplying sufficient power. And that to me is very annoying because I like to, if I'm going to have a very cheap secondary computer just to travel with for basic tasks, emails, I still want to be able to access an external hard drive, so that's a bit of a deal breaker. Even plugging it in with the power port still doesn't work. Uh, the webcam is quite slow, so 72080p, but it seems to run at about 15 frames per second. Not really that good quality there. And whatever Jumper has done to make this seem so fluid and snappy, I really wish that the manufacturers of other tablets and other Atom devices would do that because it just seems multitasking and moving around for some reason quicker and more fluid than other devices. So it's puzzling really to me why that is, but also good to see. I do happen to think it's probably down to the fact that it's only a 1080p screen, which is more suited to the Atom Z8300, not driving something like a 2K display or 1440p definitely more taxing for the system so this is just a quick update i will have a full review of this tablet which will be up and coming in hopefully about a week's time so keep an eye out for that i'll test out some gaming too i know i've had some requests in the comments people said what's it like at gaming will it be able to play games like um, counter-strike or league of legends i will definitely have that tested out so keep an eye on the playlist for up and coming videos on the easy book 2 here Thank you so much for watching this video and see you soon.